Okay, so I just started off by doing a very um, light outline and then after I did my light outline in graphite, I went over it with a light gray Prismacolor pencil and I erased all the graphite so that it's just my Prismacolor pencil on the paper so that none of the graphite sort of goes through. After that, I took, you would have seen that there was a white pencil that I put down. So I took my white wax based pencil. This could be um, Luminance pencil or Prismacolor pencil. Um, whatever white pencil you have, as long as it's a wax based pencil, it will work. So just put your white wax based um, pencil down before you put any color down on the areas that are going to be wet or moist. So there's areas on the nose that I want to keep very highlighted and that is where I put the lighter shadows down. I then did the darkest part of the nostrils because this gives a nice clear indication of where you are in the drawing and it's just it makes it easier flow to work from as you go. I then created a very very light layer on the areas that are sort of in the background and that is like the the skin sort of area around the nose towards the back of the dog and that is um, going to be blurred out so I'm not going to worry about any details. Now I'm coming in with a dark grey pencil and I'm trying to indicate exactly where my dark values are compared to my light values. So when you're doing your base color or your um, underpainting as they call it, this is the process that you take. So you're pretty much putting all your colors down without worrying about any detail, but you want to put them down in a way so that it's easy to see where the darkest values are and where the lightest values are. So by the time you get to the layer where you need to put any details down, it's going to be really simple because you already have an underpainting that's showing you exactly where certain areas are, which areas are dark, which areas are light, which areas have this sort of shape and which areas have that sort of shape. And it just, it's a very good foundation to work from in terms of getting a base down before you worry about the details. So it never fuss about the details on the first layer, but do fuss about the values or the colors. So um, I am just, I went in with my dark grays and now I'm going to start adding different colors of layers. So I'm adding in some of my pinkish sort of values, my fleshy sort of values. And then I'm going to come in with more grays and blues. And um, I'm going to just take note of my reference photo and try and find the colors that I think will suit it best. Uh, the closest colors or colors that I think would work and put that down really gently. Now you'll see when I put the colors down, some of the areas are not going into like tiny little gaps, like just on top of the nostrils, you'll see that I put some gray pencil down, but there seems to be a bit of a texture on the paper. And that was because before I put any color down, um, initially when I did my outline, I lightly um, used a sharp tool to sort of scratch out some of the surface of the paper. And that is also gonna help um, give the, the nose a little bit more of a texture and highlight it a bit better as well. Um, remember though, if you are going to etch your paper, I, um, I have a tutorial up on how to get perfect whiskers and perfect fine hairs every time using an etching tool. So I'll put that just up here so that you guys can see um, what I'm talking about. But when you etch like that, be sure to go over it with a white wax based pencil if you don't want any color to go in there when you use a solvent. So just note that even though you're scratching the paper, pencil won't go in there. If it's pencil alone but if you are going to blend it with a solvent then the color will go into those indents so i'm still continuing on with layering my colors all over the nose um so i'll use blues i'll use my grays i'll use everything before i get to this point where i put solvent on so now that i'm happy where, that i kind of have my base colors down or my underpainting down i'm going to use my solvent to blend and then you're going to see those colors are going to start to come to life and it's just going to pop and that crayon sort of texture is going to disappear as well. It's going to give it a nice smooth look. And this is going to form a perfect foundation for us to work from to add all the details on top of that. So you see the colors are becoming way more pigmented now. Everything's getting a smoother look. You can see which areas need to be darker, uh, which areas are going to be the darkest and which areas are going to be the lightest. And then this is a very good surface to work from, a good foundation to work from. So I am using both my Prismacolor Premier Pencils and my Faber-Castell Polychromos Pencils and I am blending with a solvent called Art Spectrum's Odorless Solvents. It's got no smell which is great. I don't get I don't get a smell from it at all. Not even a slight one. There's no fumes or anything. I don't get headaches, nothing like that. So um, I really, really like that solvent and I do like the feel as well. So now I'm going to start um, working a little more on detailing. So I'm going to add purple to the nose because I know that the nose has got some pinkish... 
um, purplish kind of colors in there and they have these like, I don't know, yeah, bluish purplish tones. So that's what I'm going to work on here around the, the nose everywhere. So now I'm coming in with my indigo blue after I've put in some purple and I'm just going to keep building up some of that. And I'm working in the same sort of patterns as I can see from my reference. I'm not just going to put the colors down. Um, all in a straight line. You still want to work in the right direction. So if you're drawing fur, you want to do the fur in the right direction. Um, like I'm doing um, around the nose, you can see everything has a sort of direction and flow which creates movement and it, later on it's going to start creating um, definition and give you that three-dimensional realistic look. So you just continue to layer like this. The nice thing about layering with pencils like this and adding solvent and um, Layering again is you can continue to do that a number of times until you get to a point where you're satisfied with the sort of detail that you've managed to put into your work. Also, by layering like this with a solvent and using a light hand all the time, you can use your wax based pencils like I am now, a lighter color and go over a darker color and it will show up real easy. So you don't have to worry about um, if you accidentally go too dark, you will be able to add lighter sort of values on top of it as long as you don't use a heavy hand when you layer and you keep blending it flat with the solvent. So now I'm coming in and I'm blending again and this is going to make the next layer a little easier to apply. This is also going to blend those purples and blues in nicely together instead of it looking like it's kind of separated. So this is going to mush the color together, give it a smooth look and then we can go in with more detail on top of that once again. So keep, keep doing that. So you really want very, very little sol uh, solvent on your pencil. You want to have as little as possible. It must feel like it's almost dry. That's how little you want on the brush. And you just keep working it until it's nice and smooth. If you put too much solvent onto your brush, it's going to lift too much of the color around and it's going to move too much of the color around and it can start making it sort of blotchy. So another way, if you're doing blurred areas, I just took a piece of tissue paper and I mushed it all in. The tissue paper does lift a lot of the color off, so you only want to do that if you're working on blurry areas. I mean, you're not worried about those details and if um, you're not worried about the tissue paper lifting the color. So just be aware of, of that. So I did work these areas a lot. Um, I kind of didn't like the way it turned out, so I kind of overworked them. And eventually I got to a point where I was like, okay, just keep working on the nose because that's not the focal point of this drawing. Um, so it doesn't matter if, the, if it doesn't look exactly the same as long as it still has a sort of a blurry effect. So I just continued on with the nose. Now I'm using my indigo blue and I'm starting to work a little more on detail. So now I'm going to focus on detail. I'm going to pay attention to my reference photo and I'm going to start forming shapes. And, and try and get it as close to my reference photo as possible. Um, I did get to a point where I didn't make the spots on the nose or the little like round bits on the nose as tiny as it is on the reference photo, but to me it didn't matter too much because it would still look, it would still give the same effect. So right now I'm coming in with a lighter color of my Prismacolor pencil, it's a pinkish kind of color. And I am starting to form that texture on the nose. I'm creating those spots on the nose and it's going to start looking textured. And now I'm coming in with a peach. I think it's a peach or cream. And I'm making even lighter highlights against those pink textured spots that I just put down. And this is going to give those spots a little more definition where it's going to make some parts of the spot look a little more shadowed and some look a little lighter and this adds depth to it. Then to add further depth, I'm creating the shadows with my black pencil. Um, I do wish though that I went in with a darker gray or a dark blue instead of my black because the black ended up being too harsh to put in between all of those areas. So um, I did learn that when it was a little bit too late. But I could go over it with a lighter gray and sort of try and blend it in a bit smoother again. So now I want to add the details to the fur around the nose. So I'm going to take a dark gray, a cool gray pencil, I think it was, and I'm going to start creating the shadowed areas that are sort of between the fur. Taking note of my reference photo, it is kind of some areas towards the middle are more spotty than, um, than lines. So I'm just going to make sure that I create that. I'm going to make them very random so it doesn't look too consistent because the more consistent the direction of fur or hair looks, the more fake it looks. There's a lot of variety in, the, um, in 
doing hair or fur you can't have everything going in exactly the same direction because it just doesn't look right so now I'm adding more sort of pinkish values in that to it some reddish values and that's going to balance the background colors with the foreground part of the nose so that's that's a nice um, color to add into the um, fur in the back because it's colored in the nose as well you always want to balance the background with the foreground so if you've got colors in the foreground make sure you add some of those colors into the background and vice versa and that's just going to make it flow and balance instead of making it look like you've almost cut and pasted something over a background now I'm coming in with a light blue Prismacolor wax base pencil and I'm going to form the highlighted parts of the fur. Again, trying to not go make every piece of fur in the exact same direction. And this is going to make those darker areas move even further to the back and the highlighted areas move further to the front, making it look three-dimensional and soft and furry and that is what we want. So that really makes it pop out more. And then if you don't feel like you overdo this because it's always easy to come back in with a darker color again and add more shadows and values to that. So that looks really soft now. And now I'm coming in with my black pencil and making sure to focus on the real dark areas which makes it pop a lot even more. So that is just the real quick and simple way of drawing a dog's nose. Um, it's just a matter of layering and focusing on your textures and working those layers and not worrying about details until you've finished your first underpainting layer and maybe an extra two layers on top of that. Only then do you worry about the details. The most important thing is getting your values down and then the details come easy afterwards. So I hope that that helped you guys out. If you guys are interested in seeing the much longer tutorial where I put way more focus into it, um, the one hour version of this is available on Patreon and that also includes a cat's nut and a horse muzzle as well and different techniques are involved in that too. So I thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys soon. Bye!